No matter if points are gained or points are lost, there will be much to discuss. For analysis regarding tonight's Winnipeg Jets game, here are Dave Manouk, Ezra Ginsberg, and your host, Drew Mandel. The Illegal Curve post-game show starts now. Good evening, Winnipeg. Good evening, Manitoba. For all those joining us live this evening on our YouTube channel and all of our social media platforms, we say good evening, universe, and welcome to the Illegal Curve post-game show with Dave Manuk. With Ezra Ginsberg, I'm your host, Drew Mandel, here to discuss the Winnipeg Jets, the on-fire Winnipeg Jets, one of the hottest teams in the NHL, racking up another two points in the victory column with a tidy six three victory over the Nashville Predators as they returned home to start the homestand in downtown Winnipeg. Gentlemen, good to see you both on this Thursday night. Uh, you know, I, I was sort of thinking as this game was getting underway and as, you know, trying to figure out where I was going to lead off with this post game show, you know, I, I, I would say right now, 13 games through the Winnipeg Jets season, to me, this Jets team Looks like a team, and we the other shoe might drop one day. Who knows? But right now, this team looks like a team that beats the teams it should beat. And oftentimes, in past years, we haven't necessarily been able to say that as well. You know, we've seen instances where they do so, and then they fall off. But right now, with the way this team's playing at five on five, and the way that this team is beginning to maybe even out when it comes to the special teams, they do seem like they're a pretty good hockey team i would say well last game was arguably their best road game of the year right like i would argue that was their best road game of the year especially in the second period the jets completely took over led by the shifley right line and same thing tonight right like it, it happened in the second period again the predators stuck around and then you know the kyle connor show took over which we'll obviously get into the betway game recap because he had the hattie but yeah, I mean, so far this season, the Jets are beating the teams they should beat, whether it's Nashville or St. Mm -hmm. Louis or, you know, Arizona, Arizona. even though we yeah. all agree that Arizona is a better team this year. Um, you know, and earlier, you know, the first six or seven games of the year, we were talking about all of these points that the Jets left on the board, right? Whether it was the opening game against Calgary or, I mean, even more recently against uh, the Rangers or, or Montreal, right? Yeah. So the Vegas game has really been the only blip, right? Because the team has eight points, pardon me, points in eight of nine games, right? So yeah, yeah, they're they're playing really well right now. And, and I would agree. I mean, Nashville, I think, you know, the three of us probably had Nashville as the fifth, sixth or seventh best team in the central. I think most people had Chicago, but I mean, Chicago is actually playing some pretty good hockey. But I think the point is not many people had Nashville as a top four team, the central division, I think. And by the way, you know, it was mentioned by Dan Roberts on the, on the broadcast. And it seems like, you know, a month into the season every year, we're talking about, you know, how weird the schedule is, but it's, it's pretty weird that that was the first game of the season in the central for the predators, right? Like we talked about the jets have only played uh, what four games now in the this central, is their the, fourth game in the right. yeah, we we no, but The yeah. fact that Nashville hasn't, hasn't played a game in the central to me was uh pretty odd considering that was game 12 or 13 for them. Right. So yes, the jets are beating the teams they should beat. They're playing really well. Um, you know, the special teams obviously over the last three or four games have come around the penalty kill uh, was really good tonight. The power play was really good. And you know, that at, in the third period there, Dave, when the jets took the back to back penalties, yeah, uh, you know, the predator you're down two goals. The predators could have, you know, climbed back in that game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the Jets penalty kill got it done. So the special teams, to me, you know, if we're looking at this, like what's the biggest difference between the last four games, five games, the special teams is the obvious answer. But, yeah, the 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 big difference between this year and last year is the Jets are getting it done at even strength. And, yeah. you know, they're not relying on Connor Hellebuck or Lauren Brassois. Like Lauren Brassois and Connor Hellebuck are not, you know, anywhere close to the top five or top ten in the league and goal saved above expected. Not saying that they've been bad. Uh, but Hellebuck and Brassois definitely have not had to steal games so far this year. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was just going to chime in here and say that to me, as he's right, like the, we already talked about it throughout the course of this season, the five-on-five -five play for Winnipeg has been pretty good. Yeah. The problem was that their special teams were abysmal. And now you've cleaned up the special teams. You're scoring on your power play. You're preventing on your penalty kill. Hmm, your five-on-five -five play didn't take a hit. Yeah. Guess what? Even though a number of guys took hits today and there was some uh, <laughs> quite a quite a little bit of physicality, it felt like the old days of the Jets Predators, the 17-18 uh, run. But look, 
I mean, it, we talked about it. We talked on the Saturday show. We've talked about it on post game shows when your special teams are working yeah. and your five on five play. Cause remember the jets almost had some cheap calories where their five on five play last year wasn't great, but they had such a good power play or their penalty. He was working that they managed to maybe, and obviously their goaltending was exceptional. And as he's right, goaltending hasn't been exceptional this year. Right. So because of those, so let's call them empty calories, the jets were able to manufacture a lot of points. Well, this year, you don't really have those empty calories. You have a, a, a routinely the, the lines playing well. And it's not just, notice I said line, not one line. You've got multiple lines throughout this team now that are yep. playing well. They're coming at you in waves. They're evening out the ice time, which means you're not overworking guys. And to me, again, we said it. If your five and five play is, is this good and your and your um, special teams gets cleaned up, that's going to be the difference between this Jets club excelling and or middling. And right now we're seeing them excelling simply because they figured it out. Again, like I said, regardless of what it is, I mean, again, it's not done because they've had some success over a course of a couple of games. But the fact of the matter is, if they can continue this, and of course it's a big test against the Dallas Stars on Saturday, Yeah. but if they can continue this, I mean, there's this is exactly what you want to see from this Jets club, a, a deeper team and a more efficient team in uh, all elements of the game. Yeah, look, they're now 4-0 and in division. And yes, they haven't played the upper echelon teams in the division. No question about it. But they so happen to be playing also in a division that, you know, I think most people would say a weaker division, which is weird to say about the central division because for so long it was the toughest division in the NHL. Is there but any any doubt in any one of our minds that the two best divisions are in the East? Like, to me, it's not yeah, even close. It's not even close, no. Well, you look at the teams. Which is weird because the West keeps winning the Cup, right? But, right. But As yeah, I, I don't mean, know. The San Jose Sharks look really good in the Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> they, well, they, they, you know, we'll keep a close eye tonight on the post game show on the stink bowl between the uh, the Sharks and the Oilers to see uh, to see how that plays out. But uh, you're, you, look, there's no question as you're absolutely right that the two best divisions overall, you know, top to bottom, are in the East. But you know, the Jets have to win those games in division, and if they can, they're off to a good start. They did well last year in division. What were they and, like? And, and, what was it know, like? They were they were a good number, whatever it was. They were yeah. significantly over. I want to say 18 and eight, but that's, it seems like it's too little. So it would it'd be higher than that, but whatever it was, their number against the central was very good last year. Yes, it, it was very good last year. There's no question about it. I'll see if I can pull it up uh, real quick here. Mine's uh, low, but it's, it's something of that nature where they were significantly above 500 in their uh, games against the central. Mm -hmm. They were good against the central last year. They're, they've been good against the central so far this year. Uh, they're winning the games they should win and, and they're doing so not on the back of Connor Hellebuck, because both of you said, because the goaltending, I would say so far, it's ironic, you know, the, in the pre, in the, in the preseason, uh, the guys on the athletic or whomever it was on the athletic described uh, the jets as a, the, uh, you know, a very mid team with excellent goaltending. Well, yeah. that's sort of been flipped on its head right now. The jets are playing excellent hockey five on five with very mid goaltending. Now I wouldn't expect that to last. So, you know, imagine if this team can stays at this level and then gets the goaltending to back it up. Well, it's not going to be a team you want to play night in night out, but it's just, they're playing a very good brand of hockey right now. And that's certainly yeah. what you wanted to see from them. And you weren't sure how they were going to respond tonight off the road trip. And everyone, you know, the old cliche, and it's definitely a cliche that, you know, the hardest games to win are their first game back playing at home after a bit of a road trip. And, you know, this was what you wanted to see. They really, yeah, you know, for, yes, the score uh, was closer at times, but really the Jets, I think, by and large, controlled this game. And, being the stronger team, being a better team, they should be able to to sort of put their foot on the Nashville Predators. And they did a lot of that throughout the course of this game. And 6-3 is the final. And yes, that third, per that third period was absolutely interminable with all the different penalties being called, you know, every which way. It just seemed like oh, that third period there are a lot of penalties. took forever. Including... Oh, no, there's only one delay a game, I think, in the game, which is as his least favorite penalty, but right. two, but the, the two too the many number of too many X. men. So, yeah, it was a very when, long. Sorry, Drew, when was the last time, by the way, back that to back. You, had, you had not just not that, but you had a guy, Lowry, not just a guy, the captain, yeah. have two fights in the game and also back to back. Like, I agree with Dave, the back to back too many men on the ice is yeah. very rare. Did his mic just cut out or something? That was weird. Oh. Am I good, guys? No, now you're good. Now you're good. It was, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sounded good on my end, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's rare. All I wanted to say was it's rare where you have two too many men on the ice penalties 
and two fights in a period in the same game. Yeah, certainly. We'll have to get the Elias Sports Bureau on that to see if they yeah. can give us some insight. The Patrick into Elias Sports Bureau. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Very as long as it goes back to your devils, Ezzy. That's the that, that that's the that's the important part. Uh look, everything you, you like by and large, you like the Winnipeg Jets effort tonight. You like the game. You like what I like about the goaltending, not probably the overall game necessarily, but I thought Lauren Persois got better as the game went on. And in that third period, when it was still, you know, potentially a competitive game, uh, when especially, you know, when it was 4-2, uh, you know, to start that third period, uh, and, and the Predators could have, you know, could have gotten even closer when they had those power play opportunities, Laurent Brossois made the saves that he needed to make. So his numbers aren't going to look great, you know, three goals against uh, on only 23 shots. So that's not going to do anything great for any save percentage or anything. And there's still some an area of concern there, I would suggest. But he got better, and I thought he made the key saves when he needed to make them as the game uh, went on tonight. And look, 6-3 is 6-3. And points in eight of your last nine or points in eight of your last nine. The Jets, uh, you know, and it's not like they have to hold their nose while accepting these points. These are well-earned points that they're banking uh, and, you know, again, Saturday against the Dallas Stars, which is your next contest, not an important game because it's game 14 of 82, but it's going to be nice to see how the Jets, you know, play against a team that has got a higher caliber of, of, of performance in them than the Blues do or than the Predators do or than the uh, Arizona Coyotes do. A, t- team ag- a game against a team that is considered to be an, an upper echelon team uh, within this NHL. So that's what's in store on, on Saturday between the Jets and the Dallas Stars, which, of course, allows me to plug Saturday morning's Illegal Curve Hockey Show, 9 a.m. here on our YouTube channel, getting you set for everything with the, with regard to the Jets and the Stars later on in the afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, Ted Wyman going to join us from the Winnipeg Sun to talk about that game on Saturday morning. So let's talk. And the, and the West final, of course. And the West final, of course, between the Bombers and the BC Lions. Yes, no question about it. We touch on everything when we need to here on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. But let's get into the goal-by-goal recap here of the Jets' 6-3 victory over the Nashville Predators. You know it. You love it. It's the Betway Game Recap. The Betway Game Recap. Big thanks to our friends at Betway for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post-game show. The Betway game recap, your Betway is your, is your most trusted sports betting platform. Be sure to head over to Betway and bet your way. Must be 19 years or older to play, and we want you, first and foremost, to please play responsibly. Winnipeg Jets open the scoring in tonight's contest nice and early. Four minutes and four seconds into the first period. Good things happen when you go to the net. Good things happen when you put the puck on the net. Mason Appleton gets his fourth assist to Lowry and Niederreiter. And it's an off-the-rush goal for a line that doesn't typically get off-the-rush goals. But everybody gets a little stick on it. Everybody makes a nice passing play. And then Appleton just goes hard and throws the puck towards the net and sort of ricochets off Tyson Berry. Uh, past UC Soros to give the Jets a one nothing lead, as he. Yeah, I like the work that Nino Niederreiter does on this goal. I think it was <laughs> Ryan you just O'Reilly. Said you like the work Nino Niederreiter does, period. <laughs> and that, that would have been a fine statement. Yeah, sure. But I, I like that. I think it was Ryan O'Reilly that tried to clear it off the boards and then Niederreiter picked it up midair. But it was Niederreiter, as you mentioned, who starts the rush over the Preds blue line. He just makes a nice pass by fighting off O'Reilly there. Uh, and yeah, we, you know, it was a little bit of a, a debate who scored the goal. And then you could see that uh, as they were skating to the bench, Lowry, I think he was uh, re- also possibly, you know, motioning to the referee, but Lowry motioned that it was Appleton's goal. So mm-hmm. this line continues to be, you know, very strong guys. I mean, clearly the game against the Coyotes uh, was probably their strongest game of the year. And, you know, this game tonight, I mean, that's what you want. You mentioned, you know, the first game after a road trip. You want to start strong, and you know that's what they do four minutes into this game. So, uh, yeah, I mean, look at you had both Lowry and both Nina Ryder going to the net there. You love to see that, and that's when the line is the most effective, right? Like this is a crash and bang line, like Kevin Sawyer calls it, the identity line, the grinder line. Uh, you know, this is what they do best, and obviously, you know, Lowry had the two fights, 
didn't have any impact on the game, but he was throwing his weight around and laying some good body checks. And that definitely did have an impact in this game, Dave. Yeah. And, and you know, it's appropriate as he, that it was Moose alumni uh, game. And, and of course it seemed like the entire Moose alumni with the exception of Brendan Dillon were in on this, on the goals throughout the course of this hockey game for, for the Manit- for the Jets, I almost said the Manitoba Moose boys, but yeah, Mason Appleton, of course, won AHL rookie of the year back in 16, 17. So uh, appropriate that he gets things going. Of course, Adam Lowry had some, some spot duty with the Moose. He went down, I think it was for four or five games before he was quickly recalled up to the parent club. But I mean, it, it's just a testament to that line. That line just works so well. And I said it, and I'm going to jump ahead to the third period because it's, you know, it's, it's true throughout the course of the game, but it was evident on one shift. Nino Niederreiter mm-hmm. doesn't ever seem to run out of energy. And of course, you know, Scott Billick broke the news on Saturday evening about Niederreiter's agent being in town and, and him wanting in town extent. this weekend is when he's in, coming to town this week. He said this week, he said, yeah, then Elliot, say, Elliot Friedman in today's 32 thoughts, or I guess it was late last night. It was published, yeah. clarified that uh, Niederreiter's agent is coming to Winnipeg this weekend. You know what? Scott Billick has it. We don't need, we don't need any clarity on the report on the initial report. The fact of the matter is there's talk yeah. about Nino Ryder wanting an extension here in Winnipeg. I, I know Drew, like it's, it's worth noting, but I'm with, I'm with Dave. Like this, I guess that's Elliot's job to give us meaning, meaningless information like that. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah. I, I would, I, you know, far be it for me to have to defend Scotty, uh, you know, who we love of course, but I thought Elliot should have probably given Scott a little yes, bit of credit. He should have given yeah. him credit. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought it was a little, I, I thought it was weak. I think we also have to give ourselves credit because we asked Jim Toth about that and Jim Toth brought that up. Right. So we gave Nino a little bump before that. Oh, he got the, first, he got the IC Arizona Coyotes game. So yeah. he got that hat trick. If, no if it wasn't for us asking Jim, then Nino would not never have contacted his no agent. Question. Yeah. No and question. said, you know, come right. to town so we can work on the contract. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. I see is going to be getting a percentage of Nino's naturally. next contract, by the way. So look yeah. out for that boys. Yeah. So anyways, the point is though, that Scotty was the one who broke the news last Saturday night about uh, Nita Ryder wanting an extension here in Winnipeg. Yeah. You know, again, another testament. We can talk about that on Saturday. Doesn't, maybe doesn't they, like, maybe sorry, we'll have an extension like to talk years, about. Three years, four and a half million. Like, that sounds right to me. Yeah, yeah. I could see them squeezing into the fourth year, potentially. You know, he's going to be, what, 32 when he signs or when it's when it kicks in. So, I mean, three, four years, the guy keeps himself in great shape. And again, like I said, you, you saw it throughout the course of this hockey game. And I'll get back to this talk. And I suspect, like I said, on Saturday's show, we can discuss uh, Nita Ryder at, at length, potentially a contract extension, or if it hasn't yet happened, the concept of a contract extension. But, I mean, I just think that you just see that energy from this line. So whether it's Appleton, Lowry, or Nita Ryder, it just works. And it's going to, you know, again, Gabe Velarde skated uh, for the first time today. He was waiting for a brace to come in. So he's still a ways away. I remember the injury that took place on October 17th. And uh, that was three weeks ago. And of course they said four to Sorry, six Dave, weeks. Is there, is there, I don't know if Drew was thinking this as well or anybody else, but is there like a brace shortage in, in Winnipeg? Like, <laughs> I, would, I would think, I would think that there's a lot of, like, can't you go to like Pan Am, what's it called? Diamond athletics. I would get, I, a, get a brace. Like I, I would, and that's speaking from a guy who didn't rehab his ACL and MCL say, injury from who, the Jewish who, who Students Association a for Hockey League. Yeah, well, exactly. My, I also had sister- bra- braces. Shout out to uh, Dr. Ernie Cohen. I'm not sure if he's still alive, but he was my orthodontist. Well, regardless of that factoid, interesting as it is, Ezra, I think the reality is that uh, he wasn't skating during the road trip. So it wasn't that I think there was a brace shortage per se. I think he was just waiting for the brace to come in because they probably ordered it when he was on the road. They got back. He's now skating today. So the point I'm making is he isn't coming back anytime soon. So you're going to see the lines kind of remain the way they are. Of course, there were a couple of guys who they kept leaving the game and coming back, leaving the game. So we weren't sure there were going to be some situations, injuries, that sort of thing. But ultimately, uh, that that third line is just playing so well together and they get things started for the Winnipeg Jets. Can I just yeah. throw in one more thing? I know we got to get back to the goals. I'm, I'm going to say this you again can. and again. How did Chevy get Nina Ryder for just a draft pick with an extra year left on his contract? Like, I, I believe that was David Poyle's last move as a GM, by the way, because you remember well, te- technically his last move was that seventh round pick for that. He tra- remember he traded, made a trade at the, he, he made one he more Tanner trade. Janot true to, to Tampa Bay and, and he got a good and, haul from and, Tampa Bay and Granlin to Pittsburgh. Remember that all right. happened at the trade deadline. He also but got a rider, pick. guys for a second yeah, round pick. No, for, I know. And oh, with that year, as he, it, it would have been good enough. Just, you would have thought, remember if it was just that one year, 
for the for the dip for the run you're like okay that's you know it seems like a high price to pay the with the extra year you're like that's a no-brainer mm -hmm. and again if you're gonna get this guy who's gonna fit in well and again help to dismiss that idea that oh nobody wants to sign in winnipeg well again here's another guy who's who's looking like manitoba is just fine yeah so one nothing for the jets uh four minutes into the game uh, doesn't take long for Nashville to tie it up, though. That comes at the 6.43 mark, so two minutes and 39 seconds later. Philip Forsberg, who was really a one-man wrecking crew for the uh, Predators tonight, doing everything in his power to drag the, their, their team through the game and in the fight, assist to Gustav Nyquist. Uh, that comes, uh, as I mentioned, at the 6.43 mark. And, you know, there's a lot of lot not to like from the Winnipeg Jets perspective, a lot to like from Philip Forsberg's perspective. We know how talented he is. We know how good of a player he is. But Brendan Dillon is not going to like how this one looks on the videotape. He gets walked. I don't think Nate Schmidt's going to particularly like how this looks on his videotape as he sacrifices himself by you know trying for the uh, poke check and to prevent the pass. And Forsberg has got some nice sweet hands and he dekes out uh, Nate Schmidt to be put it 1-1 beating uh, Laurent Brassois uh, early in the first period. Sure. And, you know, Brendan Dillon also, there's a turn. And, and again, I don't want to pick on Dillon because he's one of the Jets top goal scorers right now. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But uh, no, I mean, I thought he was really good tonight. But yeah, he he turns the puck over in the neutral zone. Yeah. Uh, Gus Nyquist hands it to Forsberg, who obviously does the rest. But yeah, Dave, like, I mean, Dillon, you know, clo tries to close the gap and, you know, Forsberg easily walks in on, walks around him because he's got the speed coming into the zone and then yeah schmidt uh, goes down as we know that's like uh you know you learn how to do that when you know you're playing u13 hawker or whatever when you drop to the ice and you try to block the uh you know the pass or whatever i think it was o'reilly if i'm not mistaken that went to the net i didn't think he had a very good game boys uh he had a hat trick uh, was it against vancouver or edmonton i forget but he had three goals and four points recently i didn't think o'reilly and, and you guys know how much i like o'reilly uh, not just me. I mean, the guy won a Con Smythe trophy. Yeah. It's not, the show's not about me boys, but, uh, I didn't, I just <laughs> didn't think O'Reilly was very good tonight. So, uh, but yeah, on this particular case, it was just, you know, with look, the exception I mean, of Phil Forsberg, I don't think anybody on the predators was, was particularly good tonight. No, I would agree with that. And and that's the thing though. Like the pred, the thing with the predators is lately they've been giving up a lot of goals. And the right. thing with the predators is heading into the season. Everybody said, okay, well, after Ryan O'Reilly and Philip Forsberg, where are they, they going to get the goals? And and look at Tomasino got a nice goal in mm -hmm. the third period to make it a, a two goal game. Dave is always like Tomasino because mm -hmm. he, uh, the Jets almost took him in 2019, but they obviously took Hanela. Um, But yeah, I mean, the Predators are pretty top heavy. Uh, they just don't have a lot of game breakers. There's not a, a lot of scoring. I mean, Roman Yossi, as long as you have him, uh, I mean, you're going to have a lot of offense from the back end. Uh, but yeah, the, the depth just isn't there. But on this goal, yeah, like, it, you know, wasn't the best defensive coverage, but luckily the Jets scored six goals. So this goal was pretty <laughs> meaningless, actually. As it happened, it turned out to be meaningless because uh, uh, the Jets were able to pot more than a few past UC Soros. But it does put the Predators, even with the Winnipeg Jets, at one goal apiece. And that's where the first period ended, 1-1 after 20 minutes between these two teams uh the jets out shooting nashville badly in that first period by a 14-7 mark but really i thought the first period was a was probably the most even of the two periods uh you look at high danger chances in the first period both teams had three uh you know jets had with a very small uh advantage when it came to possession uh, but i thought the first period was certainly the most even of the periods in this evening's contest the uh, jets take over sorry go ahead dave i was gonna say drew i don't know if they showed it on the on at home but they did a moose jerseys off our backs did they show that to, to the folks at home or no i didn't see it but i saw it on your socials because i knew you'd be uh this is a very big night for you i mean this isn't just a night for the you know this is a big night for you uh, you know saluting the moose while the jets are playing it's like worlds colliding sort of for you i hope you were able to control yourself up there I may have been doing some hobnobbing with the moose, ignoring anybody jet anybody who is connected to the Jets or covers the Jets. I may have been ignoring them in favor of the folks who are connected to the moose in the press box. That is that is a fact, Drew. And uh, during the first intermission, or during the about halfway through the first period, sorry, they uh, held a kind of a jersey off our backs. So like I said, there was tons of moose giveaways yeah. uh, throughout the course of the evening. Who did you give evening. your jersey to? I didn't give my jersey to anybody, <laughs> unfortunately, but uh, the luck, four lucky fans did get to meet and greet and get the jerseys from Jimmy Olney, CJ Cease, uh, Chaz Lucius, and Brad Lambert. So uh, 
some lucky fans actually got a chance to meet them before the game, got some autographs, got a signing, which is kind of a, again, it's a nice way to integrate fans and get them excited and let them meet, you know, some obviously the established vets and obviously two very exciting Jets prospects. And then uh, throughout the course of the evening, they had a lot of different sort of um, things that were moose related and that sort of thing. Kept doing moose, moose trivia, as he, which we got all of them. And by the way, I want to give a shout out. I was texting Dave this. I think I was texting you. I meant to text you if I didn't, Dave. Shout out the, to the moose who went <laughs> to Salon. Send it Salon. To if you meant to send it to Dave, but you're not sure if you sent it to him. <laughs> it's like when I send you texts that say hi. And then Drew, Drew's known me for too long that he doesn't in, in, engage me. Like I texted Richie hi because that was the original hi, 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 hi. But yeah. when, so now that I, when I text <laughs> Drew hi, he just, he always responds with the same things. Is this going anywhere? <laughs> If I respond, and usually, and usually it's not. I just wanted to say that that the Moose went to Salome Mission yesterday. They've yeah. been doing that, Dave, for many years. I don't know how many years. I know they did it last year. Um, Number so of years, I, yeah. They keep. I, just, doing I think that's years. also a great thing because Salome Mission obviously plays a key role in the inner city. One thing before we get to the next goal, though, Drew, I just wanted to mention the Lowry mm. fights, yeah. and I know this was mentioned on the broadcast. And yes, mm. I apologize for those who don't like fighting, but I thought it was really classy that he let Jeremy Lozon, sorry, Jeremy Lozon let Adam Lowry get up because Adam Lowry fell. By the way, the second fight, that was like a one-punch knockout, him yeah. versus Cole Smith. But I just wanted to get that in there, that Lozon let Lowry get up because that's that's the code that you don't really see in it maybe as much with the lack of respect with mm -hmm. players, you know, hitting. I don't know if you guys saw the, uh, the Luke Hughes hit. Now I'm forgetting who hit Luke Hughes. It was dirty. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would mention that. I just thought it was, you know, uh, wasn't it, wasn't it uh, Coleman? No, was, was it Coleman? No, it wasn't Coleman. It was, um, Colton, Colton, yeah, Ross, Ross Colton, Colton on the, on the avalanche. That was a dirty yeah. hit, but I just wanted to get that in there. Drew, sorry that I just thought like, again, fighting is, is dying. It's eventually probably not going to exist 10 years from now, but I just like the, like, if you're going to see a fight, you just want to see a fight where two guys have respect. Nobody does anything dirty. And if a guy does fall, you let him, you know, get up. And as we know, Lowry is a class act all the way. So you wouldn't expect that from Lowry. I just wanted to get that in there. Okay. Well said there, Mr. Ginsburg. Uh, so 1-1 one, one after 20 minutes. Some good uh, physicality in that first period, as you mentioned, with the the couple of uh, fights uh, from Adam Lowry. Uh, and just uh, you know a, a, a good edge to that first period. The Jets take over the game, really. I mean, they, and they do it early in the second period. It starts at the 105 mark, and it's Kyle Connor getting his ninth of the season. Assist to Mark Shifley and Alex Ayafalo. And I mean, look, Kyle Connor is an elite goal scorer in this league, and he's left all alone. I mean, the 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 Predators just have an absolute brain fart when it comes to coverage in front of uh, UC Soros, and it's a great job by the Ayafalo Shifley Connor line. It's a cycle. It, they're cycling down low, and it, there's turn. They're you know they're winning puck battles, and then they're feeding the puck, and eventually it's Shifley behind the net. And as I mentioned. Kyle Connor is just unmolested in the slot and, you know, Shifley hits him right with the pass in, in a prime shooting, uh, you know, opportunity. And Kyle Connor makes no mistake because it's not the kind of spot that he usually misses from. And he gets the Jets a 2-1 lead here as the Predators just uh, collapse in their own zone. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. Obviously, you know, we're going to get into, you know, maybe the nicest goal that the Jets have scored this year next. But yeah, I mean, it's really kind of inexplicable you know, watching that, it was like, you know, why isn't anybody taking Kyle Connor there? Like they were just <laughs> like, it's like, okay, Shifley, you know, it's a nice pass. You yeah. know, they're doing some nice work, as you mentioned, I and, 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 and Connor was buzzing around. They were whipping the puck around pretty good. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, if the predators forgot Connor was on the ice. Um, what, but go yeah, back I mean, and watch the replay. And it's like, you know, both Phil Forsberg and Gustav Nyquist are, it looks like Forsberg's late and, and Nyquist makes the wrong read. He, and, and just leaves the front of the net. It's, it's just really poor, really, really weird defensive coverage by the, uh, by the predators well, on this it, one. Yeah. And, and you're right, Drew. I mean, that's their top line. We talked about it. I mean, mm -hmm. the Forsberg O'Reilly line, um, and, and O'Reilly, as you said, he goes to chase. Uh, Shifley behind the net I believe it was Jeremy Lozon it was the Predators second pair Lozon is also behind the net so you've got two guys worrying about Shifley and then I don't know if it was Carrier I forget who it was that also seemed to be focusing on Shifley and then like we said Forsberg's a step late and he's you know we know if you're a step late you've already lost when you're talking about Kyle Connor but yeah. you're right I mean there was three guys all focusing on Shifley Connor's left wide open. So, I mean, you know, the Jets were three guys they to gave take them, the guy but behind the net. And that, that to me, Dave, is, it, it, you know, was a main, the major story of this game, right? Like the Shifley line 
basically mm-hmm. controlled the pace. They they imposed their will. Yeah. And on this goal, I mean, it was top line versus top line. And, you know, the Predators were badly, badly outworked there. Well, and again, as he, we've talked about this so much, but it's amazing to me what Kyle Connor can do under pressure because he never seems to be under pressure. Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, in tight spaces, he just dishes the puck. He's always, he very rarely just seems to, like, cough it up. He just seems to, I know he does. I'm not saying he doesn't, but he might just not seems back like, check very much, but he doesn't. Well, I'm not off. talking about the back checking. We're not talking about his back checking, but we're talking about right now is just the control he seems to have with the puck, especially in the ozone, which is generally where you expect to see Kyle Connor, but he, he just makes things happen. And yeah, it was, a, it was a milestone goal. If you're one of those fans who compiles jets, thrashers combined history, because it moved him ahead of Brian little, he's well past little. If you're just looking at jets, 2.0 boys, he's uh, in fact, he's just, Forgetting, I'm getting ahead of uh, myself, but he's actually only 35 goals behind Blake Wheeler for second overall. Of course, Mark Shapley has top spot, but I mean, it's uh, Kyle Connor just continues to show again. Let's go back to the benefit of being with the Moose. Remember, boys, when he started with the Jets as the 2015 first rounder and he tore up Michigan and he didn't get things started with the Jets, of course, went back, played with the Moose, didn't really get things started with the Moose that quickly. And then he scored like I think he scored like 21 and 24 or 25 games. It was ridiculous. And then, of course, went started the next season with the Moose and then never looked back once he got that recall. So Kyle Connor is just a, a testament to what the draft and develop uh, can look like for a, for a top prospect. So uh, he's been he's been phenomenal. And as he, you know, we always talk about his goal scoring, but his passing sometimes is just as good with his uh, numbers being fairly even, Steven. 2-1 for the Jets uh, on Kyle Connor's ninth of the season. His 10th of the season comes two minutes and 43 seconds later. It also coincides as our Seagram shot of the game. The Seagram shot of the game. Big thanks to our friends at Seagram's for their sponsorship of the Illegal Curve Post Game Show and their sponsorship of the Seagram Shot of the Game. We remind everyone to drink some Fireball responsibly. It tastes like heaven and it burns like hell. So Fireball available at your local liquor retailer. Uh, it's a beautiful goal by Kyle Connor. You're going to see it on the highlight reels. Uh, you know, assist to Mark Shifley and Dylan DeMello. Shifley with four assists tonight. He got credited uh, after the fact with an assist on the empty net goal that came uh, late in the third period. Uh, so four assists night for Shifley. Uh, Connor just an absolute beauty here, just an individual effort. And he just makes, just makes the predators defense look foolish. And then from a very difficult angle is able to tuck it under and through UC Soros to give the jets a three, one lead. And it would not surprise me if this would be uh, the proverbial highlight of the night in, in tonight's uh, various sporting events as he. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of things are, were happening on this goal. And Dave M was the only one of us that was in the building, unless you were Drew and I'm not aware of it, but I believe I Dave M was the only one in the building. So L- Laura's away still. So if I was in the building, then you somebody should call CFS because that means the kids were at home by themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, but I mean, it starts with a great back check, right? Shifley has back pressure. DeMello's yeah. the defenseman. They combine to make a good move. It's Gus Nyquist, right, Dave, who is the one uh that that was i don't know what he was trying to do he was trying to go through three jets but uh you know it's a nice play by demello and shifley the uh, demello headmans the puck to was it ifl or shifley i forget i can get the replay up here i guess but i mean let's just skip right ahead to kyle connor right like he absolutely undresses uh carrier the defenseman not william carrier alexandra carrier william carrier is on the golden knights of course but yeah i mean this is just an unbelievable uh, move by by Kyle Connor, um, you know, and it looked like he was going to be, you know, too out of balance to to get the puck past Soros. But I mean, I mean, we know that you know Kyle Connor is a wizard with the puck, so just unbelievable move on Carrier and Dave. Just amazing patience, um, and I don't know what other word. I mean, patience is the one that that comes to mind to to wait out Soros. But just unbelievable what Connor can do at top speed. We've been talking about this as you mentioned since he broke into the league and. Uh, I guess that would have been 2016-17, right? But just an incredible individual goal. But you got to give a lot of credit for the good uh, defense that the Jets played in their own zone, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it was almost Datsukian, to be honest with you. And and I'm sure Cal Connor would appreciate that, given his, uh, his fandom of the Red Wings uh, being a Michigan-ite. 
but like guys, I was that that took place right below where we sit in the press box, and I have to tell you, that was filthy. I mean, you watch that goal and you watch that play, and you can understand why Kyle Connor is currently on pace for seventy goals, Ezzy, because and it is remarkable. You know, I mean, look, I mean, Kyle Connor didn't have a quick start to a season last year. I think he had two goals in his first thirteen games uh, for the Jets last season. Of course, ended up with thirty one. But I mean, the fact that he ends up with 11 goals in his in his first 13 games this year, and again, I'm, I like to joke around saying, "Oh, he's on pace for this, he's on pace for that." But yeah, I mean, he's he is on pace for close to 70 goals now. Whether he cools off and <laughs> comes back a little bit down to earth, that's fine. But but right now, and, and know, the Canucks PDO isn't going to stay where it is throughout <laughs> the course of the season. <laughs> well, like I said, it's most likely not going to continue. But the fact of the matter is, you, if you're a Jets fan and you see Kyle Connor. Uh, doing what he's doing right now and producing the numbers that he's producing again. Just imagine now, remember we've talked about it already and I'll just quickly get ahead, you know, not focus on this goal for a second, but just remember if the jets have a good five on five play, they have the special teams working. If they can get their goaltending to where yeah. it should be, let me tell you, this jets team is, is, is changing. And again, as he's right, it's only 13 games in and this, you know, seven, what, what is it? Points in eight of the last nine. So the streak is, 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 Whatever. Again, like I said, we always talk about this is something you have to do. You have to bank these points early, especially as U.S. Thanksgiving approaches. You don't want to fall under Elliot Friedman's, uh, you know, concerning situation here. So it's good where the Jets are and what they're doing. By the way, right Nino Niederreiter's agent will be in town Saturday at 1130. <laughs> I believe that they're meeting at highs on Maine. <laughs> yeah. So I, but getting back to the goal, I mean, again, like yeah. I said, seeing it live. Kyle Connor is a treat to watch. He really is. And, and I know the fans that were in the building really enjoyed uh, that opportunity to see that goal. Cause it is, it's one of those goals. You're just like, again, we're, we're, we're impartial. We watch this game, but you, you're like, Ooh, a little, you get out of your seat a little bit watching what he can do. And that was a, that was a significant play at a, at an important point. Cause the jets were able to build a lot of momentum from that. Right. They were already feeling good. Drew, as you touched on having scored early, but then to get another one and to really kind of put their seal on that game, not seal, but to kind of take over that period the way they did, given the fact that it was one, one after 20, it was, it was a big moment in the game. And the, and the, you could, again, we put it on, as he te mentioned it, I think he did, but this was on our social media. So if you want to go, if you haven't heard the, the reaction, you've seen the goal, but to hear the way the crowd reacts, you can hear it. It's one of those goals that creates a buzz. And there was a buzz in that building. The buzz in that building increased uh, about uh, seven minutes later, a little less than seven minutes later, when Cole Perfetti made it 4-1 for the Winnipeg Jets. We've talked about the improved special teams. This is a power play goal. It's his third of the season. It comes with a five-on-three, a two-man advantage. Uh, Gus Nyquist is in the box for interference, and Mark Del Gaizo, who I believe is the illegitimate brother of Michael Del Zotto, uh, is, uh, is also in the box for a delay of game for puck over the glass. It's a shot uh, by Shifley and Perfetti is is untouched next to UC Soros and is able to get the puck up and over the Predators goaltender to make it 4-1 for the Winnipeg Jets and we're barely halfway through the game as the Jets have really taken control early in this second period as a yeah, and you know, the you mentioned the shot comes from Shifley. I believe that's a career high for him, if I'm not mistaken, either, right? I'm not sure if we mentioned that. I don't think he's ever had four assists in no, a game. Never had four assists before. So I mean in a game he was time. incredible. And 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 I'm sure we're gonna talk about this a lot on Saturday. Uh, you know, the the improved defensive play. Like, you know, I've been critical of Shifley, you know, Drew has been critical, Dave, a lot of people for his defensive play. Nobody's really gonna be critical of a guy who's always a point per game player, but um, Shifley has stepped his game up early this season, boys. And yes, yeah, it's only 13 games and, you know, he's not going to be Superman every single game, but I mean, it's just a really hard shot. Um, and you know, you got to like the movement and it's just quicker. The power play looks quicker and it just looks, we talked about this, uh, last game against St. Louis. They just seem to be, you know, their shots and decision-making just seems to be more purposeful. So it was nice to see Perfetti get a goal because we talked about it, the Perfetti Ehlers, Nemesnikov line. I mean, they weren't they weren't necessarily bad tonight uh but you know that wasn't one of their best games either i mean the the top line and the third line i would i would argue were clearly the jets best lines but yeah i mean it's huge to get that goal dave because you know it comes midway through the game and you knew you know nashville has been struggling right we talked about it. they lost their last two yeah. games entering this game on the road right so that was that was really the killer in my opinion 
Well, and you also want Perfetti to feel good about himself, right? He's got now goals in back-to-back games. He's got three on the season, which obviously isn't a significant amount, but he's up on pace for 18, and that'd be a lot more than his career high, I believe, of eight as he. So you want Cole Perfetti. I mean, we've talked about it. He is, you need that second line to score, right? It can't just be a second line that doesn't produce. And right. Vlad Nemestikov, similar to Nino Niederreiter, again, just a, you know, a, a tidy player to steal a Druism. And, and he really does do a lot of really nice things throughout the course of the game. Things that I, I know fans and, and folks in our chat will appreciate because they do watch for those sort of things. But it's things that don't necessarily show up on the stat sheet that he does very well. And so, but at the same time, you have to produce. You can't just be getting, oh, hey, you know, here's here's a, here's a, here's a uh, you know, a bronze award for for doing something really nice. You got to get a patient trophy. Yeah, yeah. you got to get you got to get. The, you got to get those good results. And so for Cole Perfetti to get that goal back-to-back games, and again, last one's an empty netter. This one's a nice goal. This is a really nice goal. So, I mean, for him, again, against a really good goaltender in UC Soros. So that might give him a little more confidence. Like I said, back-to-back games with a goal. So you're hoping for Cole Perfetti's sake that it can get him galvanized, get him going. And then if you've got that Shifley line humming along and you got the Lowry line producing, and then if you can somehow, you know, we'll talk about it as he, like you said, that Ehlers, Nemestikov and, and Perfetti line, if you can somehow get them going, because that line is still not getting it done, that'll be a huge uh, thing for this Winnipeg Jets club, says Captain Obvious. <laughs> well done, Captain Obvious. Uh, 4-1 for the Jets at this point. The Predators don't go away as Philip Forsberg. Again, he's trying to drag the Predators through this game. He gets his second of the contest, and really he had a number of great scoring chances where he could have had the hat trick relatively easily tonight. Uh, Forsberg, his fourth of the year, assist to Tyson Berry at the 12.05 mark of the second period. And this is not a great one. It's one that Laurent Brossois needs to make this save. I mean, you just have to find a way to fight through it. It's a real nice shot. Uh, no question about it, but uh, you know, Laurent Brassois himself would say that he needs to make this save, and he wasn't able to do it in this instance, uh, and it made it 4-2 at this point in time. Still, lots of scoring, lots of goals being scored. Four goals scored in the first 12 minutes of the second period, but 4-2 uh, for the Winnipeg Jets at this point, as he. I'm not uh, hang sure. on. Before you answer, I just want to say thank you to Fall Fever. Uh, he was very generous. He contributed some money to us. And so anytime somebody does that, we have to give them a shout out uh, for doing so. So thank you very much, Fall Fever. Three wins in a row, points, eight of the last nine games. Not too shabby. Dallas will be the high watermark that's coming up on Saturday, of course. Sorry, as I apologize for interrupting. $6.99. I can buy like half a bag of grapes at the grocery store, I think, with, <laughs> with uh, $6.99. But yeah, thank you, Fall Fever. We appreciate that. We'll we'll you know put that money uh towards a good cause, maybe uh towards some IC farmery beer, maybe. Yes. Um look, I mean, they talked about this on the broadcast, Dave. I'm not sure how much it was discussed up in the press box. It looked like Morrissey could have gotten a, a stick and, and changed deflections. Remember back in the day, Don Cherry used to always talk about that in, in Coach's Corner. I'm not sure if anybody remembers Coach's Corner, really, but uh, yeah. it used to be a segment every Saturday between the, between the first and second intermission with Ron. I'm obviously joking here, boys. Yeah, you don't um, need to keep going. You, we knew what it was. Keep yeah, going. I mean, the Jets were a little bit sluggish in the neutral zone. It was the Lowry line that was out there. But yeah, Forsberg just you know takes the puck. Um, you know, and, and it's just a nice shot, uh, you know, and, and Morrissey's the defenseman back. Uh, and, you know, at first it looked like, okay, that was a, sh- a stop that Brassois should have made. It was glove side. Uh, but again, Dave, I want to give him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt if it did, did change direction. Cause as da- Drew mentioned, Forsberg had a down year last year. His career year was two years ago. What did he have? Like 70 points or something, 40 mm-hmm. goals, I think for the Predators. And he's got a great shot. Like Forsberg is a legit sniper, but I just want to give Brassois a little bit of the benefit of the doubt if that did change direction. Because even if it just grazes Morrissey's stick, mm-hmm. and and it's a and it's a really good wrist shot, right? Like that that can make it very unpredictable for Brassois. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I, I I have time for that argument there. Um, I think you just for Brossois's confidence, I think he probably needs to try and uh, try and get that save, but it didn't end up costing the Winnipeg Jets. I think he was trying, Drew. I don't think he wasn't trying. Well, thank you, Ezra. <laughs> yes, I, I would hope if he wasn't trying, then there's a there's there's a, a more there's a more serious issue at foot here for the Winnipeg Jets. But nonetheless, after a high scoring second period, the Winnipeg Jets head into the intermission with a four two lead. Uh, and to start the third period, I was really 
uh, keying in on were the Jets going to be able to sort of shut down this game and, and bring it home uh, relatively smoothly like they did on Tuesday against the St. Louis Blues. Uh, they ran into some uh, penalty trouble. And, you know, some of these calls may have been a little bit on the iffy side of things. And the refs maybe got a little whistle happy there in the third happy. period. Uh, but Nikolai Ehlers goes to the box at 6.53 for holding. Brendan Dillon goes to the box. Uh, really, uh, what would that be? That would be 16 seconds after the Ehlers penalty expires. He goes to the box for slashing. Uh, but to the Winnipeg Jets' credit. They... I thought the Cole Perfetti, sorry, Drew, I thought the Perfetti hook was maybe the weakest of the the calls. The one that, that yeah, that happened. Uh, there, look, there was then there was the, when you know the Ehlers was in the box, there was the non-call on Kupari. Where yeah. it looked like he was interfered with pretty blatantly, that should have drawn a penalty, uh, but it didn't. So I mean, there was a lot of uh, uh, let's call it Ticky game tacky. management, or you know, look. The I think the officials. We don't need to talk about the officials because they are what they are. The NHL has given their tacit approval for the officials to be inconsistent at best, and we'll say that that's what they are is inconsistent at best. And there were some missed calls both like ways show. here. Like the show, yes, exactly right. Maybe that's why we feel such a kindred spirit with the officials because it's inconsistent. There's, no, there's just no accountability with the three of us, or the or the officials for that matter. But yeah, nonetheless, that's why we're Jets, a kindred. Yeah, the Jets did a good job in you know for a penalty kill that has struggled. They did a very admirable job here mm -hmm. in killing off these early penalties in the third period. Because one hundred percent. I mean, look, yeah. like, and I agree with Dave. Like, it seems like you know it's such simple hockey analysis, but. Really, the biggest difference between the first, you know, seven or eight games and the last five games, uh, if my math is right, uh, the Jets have played 13 games, right? Yes. The, the power play and the penalty kill together has been really bad. So, I mean, clearly, even though they haven't practiced, like we talked about it, we thought the Jets were going to be practicing the special teams more. Uh, they figured it out. And there was way too much, like, you know, with Lowry and Appleton. And, and we got to give a shout out to Dylan Sandberg, right? Like, yeah, eight, those eight, block eight block shots. Ooh. Yeah. And Sandberg they were big blocks didn't... too, as he. Yeah. yeah. So, like, let's give Sandberg some credit here. Like, you talk about unsung heroes. Like, he's not the guy that's getting the beautiful goals like Connor. But you know the yeah. boys on the bench were loving all those blocks, especially on the penalty kill. Well, if you'd say Dylan that 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 Brendan Dillon was going to have three goals for the Jets for the, the first thirteen games, I think people would have uh, thought that you might have been sniffing some of the the funny gas or something uh, prior to the season starting because his career high I did check it up his career high is six, six. goals yeah. in a season that happened ten years ago. Yeah, in his rookie year. No, with Dallas. The, Dallas. It Dallas. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Started ten years with ago. Dallas. Yeah, I was going to say with uh, it's been a long time. So he's halfway there. <laughs> uh, whether or not he gets there will be. Uh, I guess well, Drew, he, much like Cole time. Perfetti, he is also on pace for 18 goals this year. Yeah, uh, that's true. They, but they, Nobody they, they likes the are. on pace more than Dave M. I used to Nobody always make those jokes. Them. Dave yeah. M's, he's a Dave M's a pace setter. He's, he's got a, a calculator. Set, he's a he's pace got a setter calculator. of the show. He's a pace setter of social media. Yeah, he's got a calculator ready and 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 ready to go to start figuring out the on pace numbers. Uh, Look, let me you, tell you, you just something. got an abacus, Drew. That was more what you used to use back in the you know the me 40s. and me and Galileo uh, hang hung out together <laughs> and, and used an abacus. <laughs> All I know is this: as he is always ahead of the curve when it yeah. comes to social media. So if you're emulating, if you're copying the big man. You're probably doing something right. I don't know. I'm ahead of something. I'm not sure what it is, but. 5-2 <laughs> uh, is what Brendan Dillon made it after the officials first waved off the goal, that then allowed insane, the goal, the and then maybe they flipped a coin, and, and who knows what the hell they were talking about. I mean, look, even if they continued to disallow it, you, you know, the Jets would have challenged and it would have, and it would have, it would For have sure. been a goal. Well, it was clearly think. not goalie interference, right? No. Like, like, like the first, I, I, Soros I, is out of his crease and yeah. like, you know, what, what were they reviewing there? honestly like i'm watching that play and i'm like okay where is it they show the first part and i'm like please tell me that's not what they thought it was the lowry brushing past i was like because that's that is not even i can't even use the word marginal because that was nothing at all uh and then even the other one i was like that is a really weak call like really weak and good on them for reversing it but like still like that was it was not a uh not a good call uh you know i didn't see how they saw it but I, 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 I don't. Do we know which ref? Would you, do we know which which ref called that? Was it the was like it Sandlack uh, or Nicholson? No, I don't know which one. By the way, Sandlack, son of former Canucks uh, player Jim Sandlack. Jim Sandlack. Oh, that's How did you know the last names of the referees, Drew? Good for you. Well, I only know. I, I only noticed. In, I, I have only, it in front of me on my screen here. Right? I only oh, knew yeah. it because okay. I only knew it because uh, Dan mentioned it on the broadcast. Jim Sandlack, Dave. That's, that's a good reference. Big, big old school Canucks defenseman. Yeah. 
What's Dana uh, Merzen up to these days? <laughs> uh, five two uh, for the Winnipeg Jets after the Dylan goal. Uh, you know, and I don't mind that the refs get together to discuss it. I mean, that's good. I think communication within a, a, an officiating crew. Uh, I'm not sure why it was you know waved off to begin with, but at least they got together to remedy uh, remedy the issue there. Five two at that point in time. Uh, Philip Tomasino makes it five three. Nice deflection of the Tyson Berry shot off of the face off win. This comes at the sixteen. 16 mark no real chance for Laurent Bossois uh I, you know I thought on on this one and then into the empty net Kyle Connor with the hat trick so it's a four point night for hat for Connor three goals and an assist it's a two point night for Alex Iafalo and it's a four point night for Mark Shifley getting uh, the four assists so an all around good effort good victory well earned victory for the Winnipeg Jets on home I 6-3 they win in division yet again against the Nashville Predators and the in division games continue on Saturday afternoon against the Dallas Stars uh, that'll be a 2 o'clock puck drop and of course 9am gets you started with the Illegal Curve Hockey Show on Saturday morning when we come back on the Illegal Curve Curve post game show presented by Betway. We have more on tonight's Jets uh, Predators game and some comments. Uh, I'll read some comments from Jets head coach Scott Arneal, full of praise regarding the back checking and defensive effort from Connor and Shifley. Two uh, things, two concepts you don't necessarily uh, associate with one another. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg with you on a Thursday night. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Illegal Curve post game show. Your co-workers love you because you always make them laugh. You're the life of the party with stories that have them rolling on the floor. Or maybe you're just the quiet one in the corner with the one-liners that just slay. Do you have what it takes to become Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job? Try your luck. Hit the stage at Rumors Comedy Club and you can be walking away with $1,000 cash. Winnipeg's funniest person with a day job. Presented by Rumors. For all the details, head to RumorsComedyClub.com. So you're a pizza person, you married a wing person, but somehow your kids are salad people. You can't pick your fam, but you can pick your BP meal deal. Starting from $18.99 for takeout or delivery at bostonpizza.com. The game can change Ah! just like that. Accidents happen when you aren't protected. So now what? Getting to your injury quickly can make all the difference. Help prevent them from being game changers with Linden Market Dental Center. Bonding, crowns, bridges, and dental implants. State-of-the-art treatments are available to help you get back in the game. To learn more, visit LindenMarketDentalCenter.com. Creating smiles for life. Whoa, Ezzy. Everything okay? You look stressed. Of course I'm stressed. We're moving the house is upside down, the kids failed miserably at packing the fine china, and my life is in chaos. Chaos! Yes, that does sound like a problem. What am I going to do? Ezzy, relax. Rolly's transfer moving and storage is the answer. With 60 years of experience in moving Manitobans and a track record of exemplary customer service, one call to Rolly's and your stress is gone. No job is too big or too small. Just visit rollies.com and they will take it from there. Thanks, Dave, and thank you, Rollies Transfer Moving and Storage, online at rollies.com. Boston Pizza harnessed fanalytics to test if the game is better at home or at Boston Pizza. The results are irrefutable. Catch the game at Boston Pizza, powered by Fanalytics. Are you dreaming of your very own backyard rink this winter but dreading the work involved? Well, stress no longer because the Rink Guys are here to make it happen. The Rink Guys are Winnipeg's first outdoor skating rink installation and rink maintenance service. The Rink Guys offer free site evaluations and different rink construction options. Plus, they use a custom-sized liner to prevent any damage to your lawn. Lighting packages are also available to help illuminate your rink during those long, dark winter nights. To get your rink started today, visit therinkguys.com. For three generations and over 80 years, Tough Duck 
has been making apparel that works and plays as hard as the people who wear it. From jackets to work boots and everything in between, Tough Duck's clothing can handle the harshest environments, even the illegal curve hockey show. Work to live, live to play. Visit toughduck.com. We're back Thursday night. It's the Illegal Curve post game show. Drew Mandel, Dave Manuk, Ezra Ginsburg with you. Sorry for not wearing a poppy, by the way, boys. Like, I just haven't had the chance to purchase one, so I'll have to go pick one up tomorrow. But you boys have your poppies on the, the top there. So, obviously, I've been a little bit sloppy. Ezra, you poppy. should get yours on Sunday. <laughs> so you can, they're way cheaper on Sunday. It's like <laughs> Halloween candy. Yeah. But Actually, yeah. Saturday, Saturday after 11 11. Totally good. Saturday after 11 11. It's well, important to yeah, wear we'll have... it's important to wear the poppy so I got to pick one up and support. You, yes, you should get a poppy. We uh, would recommend that, but uh it, you know, it, keeping track of the poppies is the hardest part. <laughs> Holy moly. Well, I was if so you, if I you lose that pin, you're screwed. Well, I was so I was so cocky on day 1 of wearing it. I was like, "Oh yeah, I was at I was with uh, doing moose coverage and I was like, I got the poppy, no problem. I'm not even joking." I got back to my car nowhere in sight it was it was absolutely no i i'm like and you know i've lost it so many times in the car so i'm like it's for sure and you're gonna stick your hand down stab yourself as as he talked about you what some that, people do though dave is they use a bobby pin to, they to, to reinforce the poppy right i know I, I know i understand or you, you know you could get like a little magnet or something that holds it i don't know you think that they would over all these years develop something that fixes it doesn't ruin your clothing but regardless yes i i agree We'll get some rare earth magnets and start clipping them together. But what the fact a, of the matter is... Hang on. What's a rare earth magnet and where <laughs> well, do I, I get one? Do, I was going to jump in there, Drew. Go I'm, not China, sure, Drew. I'm not sure what type of dark web Drew and disgruntled weed are on, but, but what is, Dave, uh, was, what is rare I earth was, magnets? Yeah. Rare earth magnets sound like they're very much black market or, you know, I'm not even sure where you get those. Now now I'm intrigued and I might go I might go down a rabbit hole I don't want to go down. Uh, uh, what did you say, Dave? You're serious right now? Like, you don't know what a rare earth magnet is? I don't either. I mean, I know what a magnet is. I've never heard of a rare earth magnet. It's like, I mean, I'm I don't maybe Dave, on... <laughs> Drew, I don't think Dave knows what it is either. I may or may not have just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Dave tried to sell us that, you know, tried to think it was ridiculous that we didn't know what it was. Yeah. So what is a rare earth magnet? I have no idea. I mean, like, honestly, you it just says, said you Googled uh, it. Well, I was quick Google. A rare earth magnet is a strong permanent magnet made from alloys of rare earth elements developed in the 70s and 80s. And then they kind of, do we have to start paying Wikipedia if I keep reading? Rare earth magnets are the strongest type of permanent magnets made, producing significantly stronger magnetic fields than other types such as ferrite or El Nico magnets. Blah, blah, blah. You say El Nico or El Nino? I was going to say El Nino to bring it back on topic. To be honest, I can actually use a stronger magnet. I don't know about you guys. Like we have a lot of, I know. <laughs> hold Dave on, hold on. Has... Ezzy, Ezzy, Ezzy. Read this comment from Spency because remember <laughs> the podcast doesn't get the benefit of what we see. Uh, so they sometimes hear us hilarious. chuckling and they're like, what are these guys chuckling about? Please read that. Drew is a big nerd. Um, and you're right, Spency. Um, I do need stronger magnets because I know Dave M. Has, I'd like to point out, Dave, so... you told him to read the comment, and he yeah. completely didn't read the comment. Yes, it, it, I did. The comment from Spency, and of course I can take gears from Spency because I know it's done with love, is how does Drew, that being yours truly, the biggest nerd I know of, <laughs> not know what a rare earth magnet is? And that's a Why very did you say fair... I didn't read it? I read it. Because you just said Drew's a nerd, but the whole point is the yeah. comment was funniest based on how Spency wrote it. Thank you, Dave. I, I agree. I mean, thank you. That, yes. I, like Sorry, how I, didn't, I didn't realize we were at the point of the show where, where I have to interpret Spencey's, Spencey's you didn't actually, comments actually, Ezzy, for no grammar was, and, and... No interpretation oh. was required. Actually, you just had to strictly read it, period. In fact, what you did was interpret it. Uh, all I was going to say is that I could use some stronger <laughs> magnets on my fridge because we have like 30 pictures, which I think a lot of people do. They put their family pictures of their friends and family and the pictures are always falling down. So maybe I am going to inv invest in some rare earth magnets. We'll take the, the take the are, 699 are you, that uh, fall hey, council gave us. Are you sure? Are you sure that your fridge is magnetized? A lot of fridges nowadays don't allow you to actually put, you know, magnets on them. Dave, you know what, this is, this is, this is very quickly getting into like back in the day on TSN 1290, when cosmic <laughs> Bob called in and told Rick Ralph that he used to paint his microwave. Like we're quickly veering into that lane boys. Yes, Drew. I know that my, my fridge is magnetized because I have 50 magnets on it, but you need stronger magnets yet is what you're saying. That's what I said. 
I mean, the, some of the magnets are stronger, but I mean, I mean, what are, what are we talking about here, boys? The sharks are the sharks are beating the Oilers two one. Does anyone talk about that or no? Yeah, I think thanks, thanks for bringing it back there, Drew. Because I wasn't trade. sure. Actually, I wasn't sure where our ma- our fridge magnet conversation was going. Ezzy, Ezzy, big trade of a, a Winnipegger. I mean, a, not a Winnipegger, a Manitoban. Sorry, uh, going to uh, from Minnesota to the San Jose Sharks and good old Zach Bogosian back yeah. in Minnesota. I'm not sure why the the Wild are trading. Like I, I, I'm a big fan of Bogo. Back in the day, he was uh, a member of the IC Movember team. Um, I'm true. not sure. Kalen Kalen Addison is a first round pick. Also, Brandon Manitoba, obviously. Uh, I'm not sure that trade was a little bit weird to me. I don't. Maybe I was the only one there, but I wasn't I really think sure. The sharks are the the Wild are trying to get tougher. Is the you know is 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 what I read? I mean, I'm not sure that Zach Bogosian at this stage. Yeah. Is, I mean, he's certainly yeah. going to. He's not going to do anything offensively for oh, you. He's but a I'm good sure depth he's defenseman at this point. Didn't he win a cup with the Lightning too? I'm pretty sure, sure he, he did. He won a couple yeah, cups yeah. with the Lightning. Right? No, so, no, he I didn't. Mean, no, no, he didn't. Drew. He won I'm one. Sure. He, you remember he got traded to Toronto. Oh, you're so right. So he, yeah, he right. lost. He only won the one year, uh, and then he lost. He was back in Tampa the year they lost. And 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 by, by the way, I, I repeat, I am not. You know, I'm not belittling Bogo. I'm I, I'm a big Bogo fan. I'm just saying, Kalen Addison is young. What is he? 22, 23 years old. Mm. I just thought it was like a little bit curious to move him out because when you like the Minnesota Wild are at the point where I mean they don't have a ton of great young defensemen in the system. I just thought mm. it was a little bit of a weird trade. That's all. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about fridge magnets again if you want, boys. My favorite part of that trade, and we'll get to the tough, like hardest hitting comments, so we can wrap up the show before it goes even further down the the, the chaos stream. My favorite part of the, that trade, which you know, uh, it was Zach Bogosian for a seventh round pick. I mean, it was not what you would describe as a earth shattering trade. Is that uh, Bill Guerin uh, said that he's been working on that trade for six weeks? Which trade? <laughs> the trade, uh, the trade to acquire Bogosian. What was taking six weeks? That's my point. That's why he traded the guy. <laughs> saying, that should be a pretty quick. What's going uh, on here? <laughs> it's six weeks to make that trade. I'm like, what the hell were you doing? For, were you were you in a coma for five and a half of them? I mean, what the hell were you doing? That took six weeks to make that trade. That was my point. Okay, tough duck hard to say. How old is Bogosian now? Is he like 33, 34? I bet you he's older than that. Well, well I, you, I'll tell you what. I'll play the intro to the tough duck and I'll look it up. How old Bogosian? He's 33. Is. Okay, maybe I looks like everyone's older than the younger than we I am. We wish we were 33. That's the thing, Drew. 33 exactly. was, you know, exactly. we were young, young and dumb. The Tuck Duck Hardison Comic. Now we're just old and dumb, as I think what, what happened there. Not young. Yeah. Uh, old and dumb. Uh, thanks to our friends at Tough Duck for their continued support of the Illegal Curve post game show. Uh, we do it on each and every edition of the post game show. One of the hardest hitting comments in the chat gets saluted with a Tough Duck. Took Ezzy, who has the Tough Duck hardest hitting comment tonight? Well, there were a lot of great comments, I'm, and, and I'm mainly talking about the fridge magnet related comments. So, I mean, it's it's going to be tough to give a, a hardest hitting comment to a Jets related comment also shout out to darwin Moore. not sure if you guys saw that comment about getting the hockey cards and and tim bits at, at tim hortons and then opening the pack and then realizing that it was uh cards from last season 22 23 season so i think darwin uh should go back to tim hortons and return that pack of cards immediately that was a good uh comment we're gonna give it to sparky though tonight's tough duck hardest hitting comment goes to sparky drew's got it up there jets are only effective when they skate not puck watch that's where my frustration lays with this team. They're finally playing the way that brings out the best. Hopefully, Bones sees that. We And we don't know when Rick Bonus is coming back. Obviously, he's going to take as much time yeah. uh, as he as he needs. As uh, he you know, yeah, as he should with his wife's uh, health right now. So I uh, love that comment, though, because look at, I mean, the Jets, we've talked about this a lot. The special teams are a big thing, but the way the Jets are skating right now and the the way they're possessing the puck, they're controlling, dominate, they're dominating uh, at five on five. So I agree. I mean, the Jets are. I mean, they're taking it to the other teams. Like I mean, we've seen it in waves. And these last two games, I think against lesser opponents in the Central, I think you've really seen how you know the Jets are badly outskating these teams. So Sparky, send me an email, Ezra at illegalcurve.com, or slide into my DMs on X at ICSEG. When is that not going to be weird? By the way. To say X to me, it's still you're the weird. only person I know who says X. I mean, yeah. I still, I, well, I that's still what it's called. It's X. it's X. I know, but I don't, I don't think anybody actually calls it X. Yeah, I mean, oh. you know, I, 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 I don't. I think Elon calls it X. 
Well, you and Elon like, are tight, so I mean, it makes sense that you're yeah. that you're. Well, we have this. At. We have similar bank account figures, so I mean. Uh -huh. Well, you but both that, have four. You both have four letters uh, in your in your first name, and they start with E. That's, so that's that's where, that's, that's where the similarities begin and end, right there. Sparky, send me an email. Send me that email with your mailing info, and Tough Duck will ship out a toque to you. And and man, these things are gold right now because I mean the weather is crazy. It's not that cold really for this time of year. Going up to like it's going up to like seven yeah, eight degrees next it's week. It's snowing yeah. and it's sleeting. Like the other day, a Tuesday night was like the weirdest. It was like hail and ice chips. And everything like mm, chips but yeah that was uh you're still gonna need those those toques so make sure you send me an email sparky there you go sparky congratulations you're we know if sparky's a dog by the way i don't i doubt sparky's a dog but that's it i mean i've never well, met a the dog opposable that the opposable digits to to type right drew that's true i've never met a dog that can type just yet but uh you know stranger things have happened like people tuning in to listen to the three of us <laughs> ramble incoherently but what here we are magnets. nonetheless about fridge <laughs> magnets uh dave do you have uh tickets to give away for the moose this weekend oh that's a good question uh well, I mean, I saw your tweet. I'm looking at your tweet from 10 minutes ago that says tune into a legal curve. As I, for the record, tickets. I never specified that we would give away tickets to this weekend. Is this comment, oh, by the way, Dave, that's up Perry, the security guard from Canada Life, or is no, this a different uh, Perry? No. no, it's a different Perry. Okay. Come on. Yeah. That would, Perry, Perry, would, yeah. Perry would use his real name. Come on, Drew. I mean, as you know better than that. I mean, that was a Perry. Um, no, but he'd use it. We know a Perry's full name, and that's not Perry's Oh, full name. I don't. Hmm. I have him saved in my phone as Perry security guard. <laughs> Um, hold on, Drew. Talk about something else. Give me one second. I'll, okay, I'll fair enough. Back to those fridges. I, I saw your tweet, and I assumed that that's uh, that you were. Try, I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't even going to try a moose minute. I mean, like it, the no whole show minute. has been. I know. I just thought you might have the moose whole show chicken. has been moose minutes for God's yeah. sake. Well, Dave, Dave, if you stop yakking about yapping, did I say yakking. You did yeah, say yapping yakking. about the Earth magnets. Then we could have got a moose minute in. Well, because the moose haven't played since the last time we had a moose minute, so that's why this weekend I'll be chock full of moose who's minutes. In, who's in town, Dave Laval? Yeah, yeah. And it's actually, it's, it, but it's it is a fun game because the Sunday game is the two o'clock game, and then Monday is the school day game at ten thirty in the morning. Is Monday yeah. a holiday? No, don't skip school, Drew. It's the, the it's like, but it's like a carryover for Remembrance Day. Right. Oh, okay. So they bring a good bunch. That'll be fun then. That's uh, there'll be a fever pitch. A lot of a lot of the squealing kids. It's always a it's always oh, a good game crazy. when you listen to the audio of. It's just you know you can Daniel Fink can barely be heard over the sounds of just the kids screaming and, at the and, at the top of their lungs. And I'm not joking when I say this. Like when you hear the kids yelling for blood for whenever there's a fight. Yeah. And people like people hate fighting, and then you hear these kids go fight, 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 and the kids absolutely go bananas when there's a fight on the ice. It's and you, like you said, Drew. It's like thousands. Like it'll be probably, my guess is seven or eight thousand kids uh, in the building. So it's going to be Just bloodthirsty animals, all of them, right? Well, to answer your question, Drew, we do in fact have seats in the illegal curve zone. This might even merit. Come on, Drew, hit the button. Come on. Oh right, okay. Give, right. Me, give the people Hang what on. they want. There you Put on your antlers. It's time for the Manuk Moose Minute on the Illegal Curve Hockey Show. <laughs> I don't know if the people wanted it, but I definitely wanted it. I haven't heard it in a while, so the it made people me feel want good. It. Thank you, Ezzy. We do have seats in the illegal curve zone. So if you you are the type of person who would like to go see the Manitoba Moose, the Jets of tomorrow in a few days, then you <laughs> can uh, then you can get tickets in the illegal curve zone. Send me an email, Dave at illegalcurve.com or slide into my DMs on twitter because <laughs> i see dave and you can uh, go see the moose and and again they didn't have a great series against rockford but uh, they were feeling good about the game overall prior to that last weekend series so we'll see what happens but as as you said they had a good week with going to the silo mission uh jimmy olney dealing with uh unfortunate situation the moose captain an acl mcl uh, injury mark morrison the head coach of the moose told me uh, two days ago so We'll get an update maybe from him tomorrow morning. I will at least um, to find out what's up with the captain and see where that stands. But uh, otherwise, again, you know, we'll see what happens. They brought up the, another Manitoba Nezzy, Dawson Barteau. Uh, he's up with the Moose now recalled from Idaho of the ECHL. And so, again, will Brad Lambert, Nikita Chibrikov, and the rest of the rookies continue to pour it on. Danny Jilkin looking like, where's Frosty? He's going to be happy because Danny Jilkin looks like, <laughs> that's funny, Mendel Magnet Minute says Spency, <laughs> but uh, Danny Jilkin looks like he's putting it together. A lot of these guys are putting it together. So Dimitri Kuzman, 2021 third rounder, he scored his first pro goal. He's down with uh, Thomas Millich, who is continuing to play really well 
for um, the Norfolk Admirals. This is turning into a moose and Admirals minute, Ezzy, but we'll uh, we'll bring it back. So yeah, if you it's been a long show, long enough show. So let's get let's wrap it up. If you want tickets to the Moose games, either of them Sunday or Monday, hit me up with the email or into the DMs, and you can go to the games. There you go. Fun for everyone here on the Illegal Curve post game show. Reminder: 9 a.m. Saturday. It's the Illegal Curve hockey show, and then of course after the Jets and the Dallas Stars on Saturday afternoon, it will be the Illegal Curve post game show. So, so you know, I've already got I've already got messages to go to the Moose game. There you go. It doesn't take long. It'll be a full day of action uh, with Illegal Curve come Saturday. For now, the Jets victorious tonight, 6-3 over the Nashville Predators. Want to say a big thank you to our all the sponsors of Illegal Curve who make the post-game show, the Saturday show, and the website a possibility. Our friends at Rumors Restaurant and Comedy Club. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, K. Trevor Wilson. Uh, is at Rumors. You know him from uh, from Letter Kenny, of course. Uh, very few tickets remaining for Saturday at 9.45. Everything else is sold out. Uh, so if you want to get your tickets, get them very quickly for that. Uh, Linden Market Dental Center, Zapia Group, Realty, Betway. They're the title sponsor of the post-game show. Our friends at Tough Duck give away toques, and we appreciate them. Boston Pizza, love our relationship with Boston Pizza. Seagram's. I was there tonight. No there joke. Yeah, I had my you. pierogi pizza. Use the gift, uh, the kids card, yeah, uh, which is the best deal. I know Drew. Drew knows about that kids card. Uh, so great times at BP Taylor. Every parent knows about that. Show in a couple every, weeks there. Every parent knows about that kid card. That's uh, yeah. Oh no, that kid card. Dollars. I uh, yeah, I, I hang on to that thing. I keep it with me at all times. There you go. Uh, Seagram's, of course, uh, the Seagram shot of the game went to Kyle Connor for his uh, fantastic uh, second goal of three that he had tonight. Rollies transfer the rink guys, and of course, Farmery Beer, home of illegal curve logger. Get it now at number two Donald Street. You'll need some this weekend, I'm sure, as you're tipping a few back, watching the Jets, watching the Bombers, and whatever else you might be doing. You can order it online, by the way. I think. Dave mentioned that on on Saturday, but some people were asking if you can get it out of province. You can order it online. I don't think they're going to ship it to Saskatchewan or Alberta, but you can order it on the Farmery Farmery Although, website. Shout out to my bro who picked up a flat today. So uh, nice. more support from everyone, and uh, we may have some more exciting news when it comes to ordering it online. So stay tuned to our next show, and you'll uh, you'll hear more about that. I, I, does Dan have a billboard now? By the way, I could have sworn I saw your brother on a billboard for his new law firm. I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> we can't go down this rabbit Ezzie, hole. Ezzie, that was a, that was just a Lionel Hutz one. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I was say, that Dan, was a that was a most wanted. Nobody has criminal, better reviews uh, on ratemylawyer.com. Let me tell you, Dan Manuk has great reviews on Rate My Lawyer. Six twenty five Naren. If you need any legal advice, KMMG. There you, there you go. Uh, support all of our fine sponsors because of their continued support of Illegal Curve Hockey. Big thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. In case you need more post-game coverage, and I'm sure you do, all sorts of news and audio about the Jets, about the Moose. It's available all the time on IllegalCurve.com. If you haven't already done so, smash the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, and leave us feedback here, there, and everywhere regarding what you think of these shows we put on for you. For Dave Manuk, for Ezra Ginsberg, I'm your host, Drew Mandel, until Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We wish you good night and good luck, and thanks for watching the Illegal Curve post-game show. Thanks for listening to this broadcast from Illegal Curve Hockey. For more great Illegal Curve content, subscribe to the Illegal Curve YouTube channel, follow at Illegal Curve on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and visit your online home for hockey in Winnipeg, IllegalCurve.com.